Welcome to Top 5 Guns, everyone. It's an exciting new show that we do where we are bringing on some of your favorite gun community personalities and talking to them about the five guns they would take from their current collection if they could only have five guns to last for the rest of their life. Along the way, we'll ask them some questions, get to know them a little bit, and today on the show, we got Joe Dawson from Bruiser Industries. Here we are. Look at you, just Miss enjoying, America. just enjoying your cigar, yeah. just you know, just living Being life a man. out here. Well, <clears throat> everyone, today on Top Five Guns, uh, we're talking to Joe, and um, I guess you know we're gonna do some questions and some Top Five Guns and all this kind of stuff. So, before we really start diving too far, why don't you introduce yourself? Give us kind of a quick hit list of your background. Hi, I'm Joe. Uh, <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. I'm an Aries. Um, no, so I, you know, gun dork extraordinaire. Uh, but prior to that, in my in a past life, I did 14 years in the SEAL teams. Shot competitively during that time. Did six years as or five, four and change. Five years as an instructor. First two years as a land warfare instructor, doing scope carbine work, oh, reaction cool. and contact yeah. uh, as part of, and a little bit of bud stuff. And then finished my career at the sniper schoolhouse, spending about two and a half years there as the course manager and supervisor. Did, did some of the, you know, platoon troop, team lead sniper stuff, and and here I sit now. And now you're in Utah with us. Yeah. yeah. Which, Smoking a cigar. And I like to think that we're basically of the same caliber of Yeah, I figured this is an upgrade yeah. compared to your last job, right? Yeah. 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 You know, we're, Surrounded by great people. Holding our own. Yeah. Um, so, with that said, let's kick this damn thing off with gun number five. Before we start talking about this big, uh, beefy freaking firearm here, uh, special thanks to Segara Gear. They make the uh, belts that are around them hips right now. You belts. Know? And um, if Those you got hips, hips, don't lie. If nope. you got a waist, uh, which I guess not all of our audience has a waist. You know, we got some probably big boys in the in, in, the, in the chat there. But um, hey, look, if you're gonna throw a belt on, it'd be a great place to start. They got the battle wagon. That's a battle belt, right? It's just code battle wagon. Um, and then there's the uh, emissary belt. There's the light inner Velcro. That's the one that I rock. Um, every day that I like because it's mobile and it's flexible and I like to be able to move um, and do kicks and different shit like that. Um, so there's code, it's just 1911 Syndicate, saves you 10% off their site. Check it out, they're good dudes, they support us and now you guys can support them. What is this gun number this five? This is a normal size rifle, right? For, yes. For me, I mean, this is just like a normal 16 inch rifle. Well, so, so. when you ask me top five and then with the premise being five guns, end of the world, like do what you need to do. I went from the approach of if I had to maybe do my previous job, do whatever, I had to pick five guns that I I went near to far or far to near. Okay. So starting from f five being fa far and one being closest proximity firearm. Interesting. So I started farthest out. Okay. So this is an Accuracy International AX PSR. This one is currently barreled in 308 only because we just did a video on uh, and I didn't feel like buying 300 Norma ammo. So this is a switch barrel that can go between long action calibers like the 338 Lapua, 300 Norma, 300 Win Mag, but can also do 308, 65 Creedmoor, 6 Creedmoor. Uh, I have six barrels for this gun. And huh. So I you kind of gamed this one. I gamed this one yeah. because I would, if you were to t far to near, this would be set up as a 300 Norma. From okay. And so I have a 300 Norma barrel for it, and. Uh, it is currently set up as a 308, and so this gives me, you know, you 2, essentially 000. have a few different guns in one, though. Yes. Yeah. So th I think that's really the direction bolt action rifles are going. There's multi the MRAD, the Saco M10, this gun, the C the Seekins uh, Hit are all switch barrel. Uh, Mac Brothers now has one, and so I th I just think gone are the days of needing to send your gun out when it needs to get rebarreled, or gone are the days of having these fixed calibers when you can have something that can run something Multiple. as big as 338, 300 Norma, yeah. all the way down to 243, 6 Creed, 6 cool. GT in the same gun. Now, is there some idiosyncrasies to running a long action 27 pound 308? Yes, but you also need one scope, one rifle, one sling, one trigger pull, like your, your manual of arms is just gonna be very, sure. very similar. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, and for those huh. of you, you know, if we didn't clarify this at the beginning, you know, these are done in order. So, hey, this is the fifth gun that you would take. Okay, okay yeah. you know, gun number one is like, if I could take one. This is, hey, if I got the luxury of going to five, this yeah. would be the, the number five. I just, you know, order of precedence of problems I have to deal with, sure. I view the ones that are in my face yeah. as being the most important. Me to you. If I have a mile and a half to deal with that problem, I view it as the least important at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I viewed importance. Logical. And the real and number one pick should be? <laughs> Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary. <laughs> right there. <laughs> right there. Um, well, this is not a light gun. No. No. Uh, very heavy. This was actually a, a, one of the solicitations for the new what ASR. What program is that? Yeah. The new ASR program for the U.S. military. I was part of that program and that testing, and it was by far my favorite gun there. Uh, followed closely by the Sako M10. I was very lucky enough to get one of the packages. This gun, when I bought it, came in a big Pelican with a 338 barrel, a 300 wind mag barrel, and a 308 barrel. All the bolts, a drag bag, was not inexpensive, and uh, and I love it. And now I have also a short action version of it. But you told me to pick Fardinier, and since I can run this in 300 Norma, it is here. Okay, fair enough. Okay, next thing for you. What is the first gun that you ever bought? So I bought my first gun at 18, and it was a Remington 870. Right on. That's so, yes. That's such a solid choice, even though I hate shotguns. And it makes guns. sense for you. Even I don't know I why that, that one seems to make sense for uh, you. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that works. It was, you know, I had a grandfather who was a sheriff, and it was, just seemed like the, like, yes. You can run bird, you can run buck, you can run slugs. I.E., right? You see yeah. the correlation? I yep. think it's fair. Cool. I think Home it's fair. Defense It'll cut a man in half? Mm -hmm. Yes. Huh? Yeah, with one with one round? With yeah. one round. Um, okay, so how about this? Uh, let, let, let's just say, let's play the game of uh, gun laws go away. Mm -hmm. There's no gun laws. There's no NFA. You can have any gun from any era. Gun laws don't exist. It can be full auto. It can be anything. Your heart's desire. What is the one bucket list gun you would take with no rule? I have a pretty good collection, so I'm going to pick something that's not in it currently. Oh yeah. I think it would either be, there's two that I, I think just for nostalgic cool factor would be either a f ori original Thompson, yep, uh, full auto Thompson, yep. or a stoner machine gun from Vietnam. Oh wow. It, oh yeah, interesting, <clears throat> yeah, interesting pick. Huh. Yeah. Why, would, any, any reason why? Coming from it's my community, cool coming from my community, short barrel, just interesting guns that were used for just doing hood rat stuff in yeah. Vietnam in Vietnam because that's exactly yeah. what they did with those machine guns yes what yeah. model were, were those I don't remember the entire isn't it something 44 See, but the stoners were SG just 44 iconic in that era and just did real oh. froggy stuff yeah. yeah 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 I like it and we're very reliable from my understanding mine too yeah never actually seen a real one yeah yeah just lots of old black and white Vietnam mm -hmm. photos of them yeah with jeans and tiger stripe and yeah. shit. Yeah. Mm. That's so fucking cool, dude. Nasty. Yeah. With that said, everyone, we're taking you to gun number four. Okay, everyone, before we get to uh, gun number four, also a beefy firearm, um, if you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, um, check out 1911syndicate.com. We have got all kinds of good stuff up there. I would suggest you subscribe to the newsletter. One, that is going to educate yourself on a weekly basis on just some basic shit that's happening in the real estate world. We are going to try to do little stories on like positive policing. Um, we're going to announce like product launches. Uh, we are working on a couple collab products right now, so we're gonna you know, probably announce that there. So um, that would be a great place to go. And then uh, we're also a real estate business. Um, you can go learn about that on 1911syndicate.com. Work nationwide, hit us up if you need anything. Then there's Patreon, we'll link that below. You can go learn about that. Okay, gun number four. Gun number four is a Seekins SP-10M. This one is currently in 308, not a switch barrel like the last one. I chose 308 just for barrel life and being that I teach availability of ammo use so being that a 300 norm I view is very much a, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 yard gun. You know, you have some time really at those distances, you know, having a semi-auto isn't necessarily as critical considering other factors are going to change between one round and the next. Okay. And so being able to see where you impacted, what the target's doing and, and make a follow on correction. I, I'm not a big like 
uh, big bore gas gun guy moving into a thousand plus, less than a thousand, a thousand and in, I, gas guns come to play. And so uh, AR 10s give you the ability, whether it's six, five Creedmoor, six Creedmoor, you know, uh, 260 or 308, faster follow-up shots, the ability, if you really needed to, to do, to do clearances and run and get into a lengthier firefight without having to work a bolt, 20 mm -hmm. round magazines, bigger bullet to hit with, all those things, mm -hmm. uh, big gas gun. The Seekins is used by some very high end level military units. Uh, I really like being that I shoot a lot of and teach a lot of like non-standard shooting positions. The, the shape of this rail and being Arca gives a very big contact patch. Uh, Definitely not a CQB gun by any means. This is definitely a DMR sniper support rifle type gun. And uh, currently this one's running a four and a half to 27 Vortex Razor Gen 2. The AI was running a six to 36. So less magnification. Um, yeah, they're just great guns. They and you be. could punch this out to uh, how far you think? Oh, a thousand easy. Yeah, thousand. I've shot 20 inch and 16 inch 308s to a mile really regularly. Cool, cool. Very Hell nice. yeah. Which, Everyone in the comments, you can't shoot through yeah. eight past a thousand. Relax, I'm, I'm just accepting people. that at some point. So. Yeah, relax. <laughs> yeah. Come to a class, I'll prove you wrong. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, moving on. I've got one for you you probably didn't see coming. What is the best Navy SEAL movie? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I know the answer. Yeah, I, I thought this was gonna be easy for you. I mean, is it G.I. Jane? Of course, yeah. no. <laughs> so uh, I will say, I think, being that it was the only one that happened prior to me enlisting, all I had was Charlie Sheen. Well, I was gonna say, so, it's gotta be Charlie Sheen, Navy it's, SEALs. It's gotta be, you know, so Charlie Sheen was all we really, all we really had. But I, while well, all I was in, there was Tears of the Sun and Act of Valor and all, mm. America Sniper and all yep, these things. Yep. So before that, that's all you had. And books yep. about World War II. Yeah. So it was, uh, that's, that's, I have to throw back to that. Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Charlie doing the damn thing. Jumping off bridges, you know. Just yeah. being upside pirate. down, repelling, sub guns, headbands. Yeah. yeah. I am cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Okay, I've got a loaded question, and I, I actually know that you will have an opinion on this because I very much do, and sometimes I feel a little bit of guilt in, in this question. Um, does nicer gear make you a better shooter? It's a loaded That's question. That's a loaded question. It's a loaded right. question. You get, it won't take you get, 10 minutes, but we'll go down the rabbit hole you get for a asked this, asked, I get asked this question a lot, and I, th I think it comes down to in what part of your shooting journey you are in. Mm -hmm. I think if you are a newer shooter, the return on investment can be better spent on training Agreed. than chasing equipment. At a certain point, then those incremental differences will start to make a difference. Now, if you that is also budget, well that's budget related. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so I'm not telling yeah. somebody who has the ability to go buy nice equipment to not buy it necessarily. If it, but if for the 19 year old kid, 20 year old kid that Just has a choice between yep. waiting to buy the nicest thing versus not starting or getting something that is usable and workable now and then can train and use some of his budget for that, that's the better answer. Mm -hmm. yep. Because you're going to make much bigger jumps in performance, mm -hmm. becoming a better shooter in the beginning. Yep. And then hitting, when you start figuring out where those inefficiencies lie, mm -hmm. start checking that box. Sure. And yep. that way you understand your why and you're not stealing somebody else's. There you go. Yeah. Well, and the, you know, the, the, the guilt that I mentioned sometimes, not to, but just to personalize this for, for just a sec, is like, hey, look, you know, a $7,500 Infinity and a $2,500 Staccato, the Infinity is not going to make you shoot three times better. It's not. It's marginal performance gains. Yep. I do believe you will get marginal performance gains, but it's like so much of where the nicer gear matters is just because you like it and you want it. You know, 100%. it's like, and I that's like okay. that. And if that's you, okay. If you drive a Corvette versus a Ferrari or a Porsche GT, yeah. the differences are going to be very minute performance wise, sure. which will matter to a good driver. Yes. But will not matter to somebody who is just going to use it to drive to Safeway yep. or right. whatever. Right. Great, right. great analogy. Good yeah. explanation. Hope people took some notes on that one. With that said, taking you to gun number three.
Gun number three. Yes, what do sir? we got? So, going from far out with the bolt action, inside with a big, a large frame gas gun, I move into what I kind of, everybody asks me this question, I, I hate it a lot of the time, which is, what is the do it all rifle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate it. Yeah. With that being said, this is as close as I'll recommend. For you to for do a, most of it. To do most of it. And you do all of it good I I enough. And not to get into a lengthy discussion over barrel sure. length, whatever. Non-NFA. Mm -hmm. This is a 13.9. This is with an LPVO with a 12 o'clock mounted red dot. I can still use night vision. I still have the ability to get some magnification out of it. This thing I can still run suppressed. I can still do CQB. It's not super lengthy, but it's not super short that I've neutered the caliber. I think 12.5 to 14.5 is kind of the, the happy ground of like pushing past 14.5, you absolutely get more velocity. With 5.56 and only having so much case capacity, it starts to become less gain mm -hmm. versus loss under 12.5. Sure. And so the decision comes 12.5 being an NFA and 13.9 or 14.5 being non-NFA. Does Is that inch going to affect your ability in CQB? For me, I tell people your can choice will affect the overall size of the gun more than the barrel, barrel length you're yeah. choosing. Yeah. And the thing is, is that barrel length then plays into what can you can run. The sh <laughs> shorter sure. the gun you build, the more can you need to not have muzzle flash and all sure. those other things. And wh whereas if I have a 13.9 or 14.5 gun, that's kind of my happy ground of where I can start to run those K cans mm -hmm. and I've burned enough powder that I don't need a super long suppressor mm -hmm. to get that performance. Yeah. And so this is a this is a Sandman S. I actually run it a lot of the time with my Sandman K. Uh, this is a Lone Star Armory TX15 Bruiser. Uh, this is a gun I did with them. This is and the reason it is a Bruiser is not just a TX15. Is this is running a Bartland barrel in it. So my goal of teaching scope carbine, I wanted a gun that had the most precise barrel I could I could put in one. And so this is a 13.9 MIDI with a Bartland blank. Uh, that's made, shot. That's chambered for 77s, and it shoots it in oh, no little shit. tiny groups. Oh, that's cool. You got a spread of arms gas block on there too, yep. adjustable or? Yep. Okay, oh. so tuned for your suppressor. Yep. Okay. Cool. And and good results with that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 How many rounds do you think you have to? Or... I treat so I the way I build guns is you know I'm I have the opportunity to own lots of ARs, and so this gun gets treated like an SPR. This is one of my primary yeah. teaching guns for scope carbine. Okay. So probably 1500 to 1700, but that's for me that's probably seven or eight classes, 10 okay. classes, 12 classes on it. Um, it's a great build. And then I also have another 14.5 and another 13.9 that have Criterions that I have thousands of rounds through because I use those for more of the carbine type, mag dump-ish type training I do. Mm -hmm. So I don't put it on a stainless Bartland, uh, but they're all set up very similar. So they're all the same trigger, same selector, same feel. And so that way I can save the, save the barrel life for doing the accuracy that I want sure. and expect out of a Bartland blank. Then okay. opt optic. This is a Vortex Razor 1 to 10 Gen 3 with a 12 o'clock mounted RMR. This is sitting in a Bobro mount. I've got a Trigger Tech Diamond in this with their uh, selector. B5 grip with a Magpul CTR. The uh, I've got an Atlas uh, bipod on it with uh, rail scales, True North Concepts. Um, for this, I, I have an Arca rail adapter at the back of the rail. I never really put my hand here, so it doesn't bother me. But for a run and gun type 13.9, I like the thinner profile comparatively to that triangle on the SP10 for doing those more carbine type. I just like a slim handguard. I'm running a uh, mod light with a mod button and it is uh, has a 100 Concepts light cover on it. Emissary development uh, cable, cable, uh, management keep, keepers management yeah those and are yeah. cool i like I those yeah really I really, really like this gun yeah yeah Dude, it's, a, it's a solid build very nice gun solid build yeah. I, I, f I feel like uh you might have rubbed off on uh jimmy rodriguez a little bit because one of his top finds was very similar to this and maybe you already had it jimmy i don't know but i'm just saying he didn't maybe <laughs> he you didn't <laughs> maybe you knocked off joe i don't know a little copycat action there love you jimmy no but uh, 13 9 is something I chose via a 12.5. I just think as a do it all, not having to deal with NFA registration or, or tax stamps or any of that stuff. If you want to shoot to a 14.5, 13.9, 14.5, that difference matters more Negligible. power to you. Yeah. It comes down to I was going to run a, a Sandman on this, and so I was able to use a 13.9. Cool. Roll.
And uh, yeah. Right on. Love this gun. All right. Well, Good that's, option. That's gun number three. So uh, this is a question we, 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 we try to ask everyone because I think that we could all maybe learn some stuff from this. So how do we be stewards for the gun community and bring new people into it? For me, it's one of those things. I think it's it's the, we need to get rid of the cool kid club. Mm. And that, that comes down to all the cults that we we our industry tends to isolate themselves into. Sure. I'm an AR guy. I'm mm -hmm. an AK guy. So, but if I'm an AR guy, everybody else is wrong. Mm -hmm. If I'm a Glock guy, everybody with an MMP is wrong. If I'm a 2011 guy, all the Glock guys hate me. Mm -hmm. Like, and then if I'm new to this industry and I'm trying to get into shooting, now all of those cults are fighting for you to join them yeah. and shit talking everybody else. Yep. And making me feel like an idiot if I'm not an expert right away. And and everybody is like, oh, you nerd, like you don't know that already. It's like, dude, you didn't either when you started. Exactly. And no. so the uh -huh. expectation of knowledge and understanding needs is, to go is away. Hundred percent. Yep. And I get asked this a lot, especially with the Q and A's I do on Instagram, mm -hmm. which is they go, hey, why do you answer the same question every time? And I go, if you're a high school teacher who teaches biology for to sophomores, you're going to get asked the same questions every year. If you're in the gun industry and you're putting yourself out there as a person of influence, an instructor, even just being a more experienced shooter than somebody else, dude, you're going to get, and somebody chooses you to be their source yeah. of information. It might be the same question every three days, because if you're doing good things and, you, and the industry is recognizing you and your follower counts coming up, somebody might've found you yesterday. They might've decided to buy a gun two days prior to that. And they're choosing you to ask that question of. Yeah. Could they have Googled? Yes. And could they have sorted through the 8,000 different answers? But if they're choosing your style, knowledge base, the way you relay information and, and giving you that respect, then I think you should give that respect back. Sure. And answer the question in an honest, not condescending, mm -hmm. not way. Yeah. And so uh, that's- So I, be nice is basically what you're saying? Yeah, how about we be genuinely yeah. good people yeah. and uh, and grow this community so it doesn't go away. And yeah. that's the point right that's there. That's the exact point. It For it to not go away, you have to bring new people into it. Well, I just think, you know, by wearing, you know, multi-cam pants and beating your chest and flexing and not bringing in youth, not bringing in women, not bring, like, those are going to be the people that bridge the gap where mm -hmm. we we can keep these rights sure. and they aren't taken away and and lessened you know inch by inch until we don't have we're the only place on the planet that has a second amendment that has it written the way it does our country was founded with using these principles and if we don't continue to breed the the love of firearms in this industry or in in this culture it's not going it's gonna to be go there away. yeah very good answer very good answer. That said, taking you to gun number two. Gun number two. Here we go. Nope, not yet. I'm ready. Oh, are you? Oh, I no. thought you were fiddling with no, fiddle fucking something. I'm just staring at a cigar. Jeez, why are you so aggressive? <laughs> it was so aggressive with you. I was fiddle fucking. Oh my god! Wait, wait till Jeez. my next comment. So, yeah. okay. Gun number two. Okay. Uh, although it's giving uh, Chris cancer of the hands at the moment, <laughs> uh, I this was a harder one for me. Being working far to near, this was going to be this or a shotgun. Okay. And I, I, the shotgun would almost almost came in. But given the ammo availability it, that I hope returns at some point, mm -hmm. I think AKs or a, some sort of gun that uses cheap surplus ammo in, it's good is something to, 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 to give to the, a, a selection like this. Okay. And so for me, this is my uh, 69 is, is mash built by Meridian Defense. This is a 13.9, so again, a non-NFA gun. Uh, I wanted to give myself something that is just a straight up battle proven surplus ammo eating steel case case ammo just workhorse workhorse cool yep. and that's what this one is for me and That'll it's built out that way i mean you have a bomb proof optic on here you got great light and that's it right we got a hand stop yep. and then you just run the piss out of this thing yep right? side folding stock uh triangle uh, and, and triangles the, always the classic. purists are going, going to despise the fact that i put a side folder on a 69 izzy and uh i don't care so uh, i don't care uh, i care about cool guns not Historically correct shit. See, and like, yeah, that's one thing with like the AK community too. Is like, well, it's not this or this. It's like the clone community. No. Like, 
I wanted, a, I wanted, a, I wanted a modernized retro. It, it's just a worker. The black and tan looks great too. Yeah, solid build. Yep, solid build. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> now we move into uh, what we like to call the lightning round. Okay. Right. Um, this is really the shit that people tune in for right here. Um, so, if you could have one drink of choice for the rest of your life, what would it be? Water. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that kind of needs to survive. So, I mean, I'll go there. Outside first. of water. For party. Oh, okay. For party. We're talking those drinks. It, it's a really hard toss up between bourbon and tequila. Uh, mm. And honestly, I'd have to go bourbon. Thank oh, really? I, I thought you were going to go tequila. Thank you. Huh. The reason I say that is because you didn't tell me I couldn't smoke cigars, and I would prefer it's bourbon true. with cigars than I prefer tequila. Fair. And so if I can't drink bourbon, then that means I, I don't really like tequila as much with cigars. Mm, and sure. So, but cigars aren't going anywhere. So for me, bourbon sticking around. Rock and roll. Hey, we're in the club. We'll, we'll get some of that done tonight for you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, next one, a standard affair question around here. Um, you're now on death row. You have been caught for... Work. <laughs> sorry. I, I, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You did bad things. Sorry, we did bad things. Okay. Um, yep. They caught you. Okay, yep. you're on death row. You know, it, it's going to be a, a fiery end to the, to the Joe Dawson story. Um, but before they do that they grant you one last meal it can be an it is an appetizer an entree and a dessert and it can be anything from anywhere so if there was that perfect pasta that you had once in jersey at the shore it can be that or whatever or the shawarma in pakistan yeah whatever this question is going to be slightly loaded with the fact that i came from idaho where i just ate red meat and then we had steak and then we had so i'm like red meated out right now mm -hmm. everybody always goes to a steak yeah, but you're on death row, so. Death row, okay, appetizer. I'm still, this is what, one of my shared favorites though is appetizer, dude, I love like the spicy garlic edamame. Oh, interesting pick. Okay. That was out of left field. Wow, I, didn't see that one. My wife and I love sushi. Okay, and so okay. I'm This is gonna there. play into my entree. Okay. Which is, I, I like, we, I love sushi. Again, it'd be a toss up between that and some steak or something, but like okay. sushi, I like sushi that has, is like covered in fish and okay. not like the roll fish, but like when they stack like yeah. the soft shell crab yeah, or, yeah, yeah. and I, and I'm I don't remember you. the place, but I ha went to a place in San Diego that had this, it was a roll in a mountain of seafood on Hell top yeah. of it. And it was spicy and that, mm. if I could magically go like, oh, it was this place. It'd be that roll. That okay. right there. Okay. Dessert. 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 I'm a tiramisu fan. Oh yeah, good. I'm good, not. Good, good I'm, call. And it ha the thing is, okay. Wow. I like Classy. really light tiramisu. Okay. Like, like I don't like super heavy dishes, and when you can get one that's like like the light whipping cream. Yeah. Like, fluffy. Fluffy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that would be it. Yeah. When okay. I travel overseas, I always order tiramisu because I always want to see who's got the best. And I, and like the standard. actual coffee flavor, not like when yeah. you're like, it might be there. I have no idea. Mm, yeah. You want that coffee kit? Yeah. I'm okay. Okay, right on. Good, good wow. answer. Wow, that's then, a that's new answers compared to anyone. Vastly different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, final question: Who's more likely to go to hell, me or Chris? Well, that's you in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and by let me, let me clarify: in a the person heartbeat. answering the question, Jake, is in a heartbeat. We're like five and zero oh right now. For in a heartbeat. <laughs> no hesitation. Jimmy hesitated. No hesitation with Joe. You just ripped the band-aid right <laughs> Can off. Can you give me one or two reasons why that would be? <laughs> Such a good guy. No, it, it's funny because we went to dinner, dinner last night and we left and my, my wife was uh, with me here in, in Utah. And, and this is gonna even sting she, a little bit. She, we, we left dinner and she was like, she was like, he's intense. And, and so, um, you know, and, and having talked with Chris for a while now and I, you know, you, you, we all interact and, and talk regularly. Chris is like that dude. It's like, hey, if you need somebody to like, you know, a, my, I'm out of town. My, my, like somebody, my family's having, you know, somebody's knocking, walking around the house. No. Like, I, I need you to go over there at two o'clock in the morning. No. I think Chris would answer the phone. I don't think Jake would. No. And, <laughs> and, and he'd go rolling in dirty. I, I think he would ignore the phone call. And but then in the morning, be like, oh man, I would have. Cell service dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He would say, I get eight hours of sleep a night. You I, called on hour six. I did not answer. Yeah. I would say, dude, I'm, I'm, yeah, go on. Roll it. So, Look at this. Two, it's okay. Two things. One, show us your number one gun. Number two, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> dude, that was zero hesitation. <laughs> All right.
we're rolling, Joe. You suck that stick and then tell us. <laughs> number one and dark. Number one. Okay, dark. it is a dark stick. It is sucking it. Them wow, on that not even editing that out. So the uh, all of these, I I have a, a fairly good assortment of weapons. That I've been working on like the foreign service rifle thing, and I really tried to choose like five guns. If I had to have five, like AR-10 can find parts for, mm. AR-15 can find parts for, AK can find parts for. Mm -hmm. The the AI probably. I'm a little less worried about things breaking on a bolt action rifle. With that being said, pistols, I enjoy shooting things like my P210, Infinities, 2011s. There is no denying the widespread adoption and ease of getting parts of a good old Glock 17. Yeah. So this is just a Gen 3 Agency Arms Gavel Glock 17. Uh, living in the Pacific Northwest, definitely I partake and enjoy enclosed emitter optics. Uh, red dot with an acro. This gun, actually I shot for a long time prior to it being built, sent it off to agency, had this done. So it probably has on the original frame and slide 10,000, 12,000 rounds and then got sent off and got rebuilt, new barrel, triggers, etc. And now it's probably got another six to eight on it. And, uh, and it just, just shoots works. and yeah. works. And I would never, I can go get a new recoil spring and it'll run. I can go get another barrel and it, I can rebarrel it. I can get parts in almost any gun store. So if I had one pistol and I have fairly decent sized hands, yeah. I don't like Glock 19s. I don't shoot them very, like not, I don't shoot them not shitty, but I don't like my pinky hanging off sure. the bottom of the gun. So I like a full size frame. I can, I can still carry most of the time with an X300 anyways. So even if I had a Glock 45, I'm, I'm, I'm not carrying any less. Yeah. It's a little bit lighter, but if I can get the barrel length out of, out of a gun, I like the recoil impulse of 17 better. It's just going to be this. Nice. I mean, the, I mean, that was in your <clears throat> your pick, right? I you, picked a 19, yeah. You cannot yeah. argue the Glock, right? And then also, I commend you for a Gen 3 because it is, from my understanding and my experience, the most reliable Glock produced. Uh, the, I so. think the barrels in the Gen 5s are better and they are give you a little bit higher degree of accuracy i that is correct for what we ask pistols to right, do right does it really matter the relevance of it though now i will say that the agency arms barrels this gun shoots super accurately i absolutely say every bit as much as a gen 5 uh this this is a very very nice barrel and uh, and agency arms are friends of mine and highly recommend if you have a gen 3 and you are wearing out a barrel and need to replace it then mm -hmm. that is a great choice of barrels to put in your gun what would yeah. you say would wear out a standard Glock barrel? How many rounds? God, I'm I asking you this for a reason. 20, 30, 50,000 rounds. Thank you. Um, and yeah. so when people say 5,000. Oh, hell no. Because they're shooting low and left. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Sorry, you see what I'm saying with this? Yeah. Yeah. I got to tell you, uh, yeah. that's you. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Bummer. I, I, I'm one of those guys, and I think it's, this comes with the experience of shooting, is I'll make a, I will blame myself for things that prove to be issues with the gun, the gun yeah. yeah like the optics loosening up or something and i'm like oh man i'm just not on it today and then i go oh okay yeah. shit maybe maybe i am you tighten it back up and you know the groups go you're like oh well shit new shooters it's always the opposite sure mm -hmm. oh my gun's fucked up the sights aren't on and then yeah. you put give it to somebody else and it's like center 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 and yep. you're like you're fine sorry man yep i worked behind the gun counter for a decade so like i got that a lot but yeah i mean i I, you, I, you told me to pick five, and at the at the end, closest can can conceal carry it, can be a duty pistol, yep. can work all the time, can be fielded. It gives me lots of capacity, ammo availability. It was going to be Glock 17 all day. That's fair. Cool. It's totally fair. Yeah, totally fair. Great choice. Well, that is top five guns with Joe Dawson from Bruiser wow. Industries. Everyone, I think that about wraps up our whole little series here that yeah. we're doing with you. Actually, I believe this might be the last video that's coming out. Yeah. Which means it's been a thrill to have you here. Um, and it's a pleasure. come do the damn thing, except you, you know, damning me to hell, but that's a different story. <laughs> Five and oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad track record now. Uh, final thanks to FLP. We'll wrap this bad boy up. Yeah, please. FLP, Firearms Legal Protection. If you carry a pistol like this for concealed carry, you might want to have insurance. Firearms Legal Protection is the guys that we use. Yep. They got the single guy plan. They got mm -hmm. the married guy that travels a lot, covers me in a lot of different states. Um, our code 1911 will save you about a third off each package, Pretty which close. ends up being a, a nice chunk of money. And the nicest thing too is, you know, if you do get in a scenario and your house is now a little dirty because some guy 
caused a mess. Well, I guess you caused a mess with some guy. They will send a team to clean that for you. The other thing is people th tend to think with it, the biggest worry when you get in a concealed carry or a, a justified shooting is I'm going to lose my gun. Yes. Well, this gun costs 2,500 bucks, whatever yeah. it may be, even an expensive one. The legal defense fees are going to vastly be vastly more than replacement of said firearm. Yeah, you nailed it. it. And so you're not like yep. I, the last thing I'm worried about, I want to shoot a gun that I'm the most comfortable with, but the fact that it goes away, you guys haven't even thought about the fact that it's going to be 10, 12, 15 times more oh, yeah. to defend yourself even if you are in the right. I think yeah. the average is 40 to 60,000. Yeah. yeah, it ain't cheap. But um, yeah, yeah, anyway, thank those guys for their support. You can yep. check them out. We got a link below. You guys can go check out plans, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun and we'll wrap it up. Let's bounce and get out of here. Let's go eat some pizza. Let's hit it. <laughs>